SCP-3989, The Bone Orchard, Level 3, 3989, Classified. Object Class, Header. Special Containment Procedures, Archive Procedure Version 1. Due to the immobile nature of SCP-3989 and its proximity to populated areas, Protocol Plain Sight 201 is in effect for operations surrounding SCP-3989. A chain link fence topped with barbed wire surrounds the property. Additional chain fencing with security checkpoints surrounds the active zone of SCP-3989 at a distance of 10 meters. Civilians are to be turned away or detained by non-lethal force. Any managing to breach these perimeters and enter the active zone are to be considered lost until re-emergence, then captured and quarantined under subsequent protocol, security permitting. Area 126 has been created to store and house all anomalies related to SCP-3989. Samples are only to be collected under expressed permission to the item's HMLCL supervisor, ACP-01-05 and HCP-01-04, may be employed to contain returning live samples at area director and HMCL supervisor's discretion. Exploration of 3989 may be requested by researchers of level 3 clearance or higher. Archived Procedure Update, version 1.1. Additional land purchases for Area 126 are currently under review, and larger concrete barriers surrounding the original property are currently under construction. MTF Chai 9 Abyss Gazers will remain on hand until further notice. Due to political instability in the surrounding area, Strategic analysis for long-term containment is underway. All material exiting the active zone is to be handled under biosafety level 4 precautions at all times. Samples are only to be collected under expressed permission of the item's HMCL supervisor. No long-term containment is currently authorized for any items, sentient or otherwise, exiting the active zone. These items are to be incinerated at the conclusion of testing. Containment personnel affected by SCP-3989-V are to be retained for questioning under HCP-03 till further noticed. No manned exploration of SCP-3989-A will be approved. Drone exploration is currently suspended pending HMCL review. Current Procedures in Full, version 2.0. Foundation assets have purchased 20 acres of land surrounding SCP-3989 and converted them into a working olive orchard. Protocol Plain Sight 201 is in effect for all shipments sent from and received by Area 126. Chain link fencing chopped with barbed wire have been installed around the perimeter of properties surrounding SCP-3989. Concrete barriers 4 meters in height have been constructed surrounding the original extent of Area 126 property, with security checkpoints on the northern and eastern walls for access to the interior. An additional 4 meter concrete barrier surrounds the current extent of SCP-3989's active zone at a distance of 5 meters. A platoon strength detachment of MTF Chai 7 fumigators is to be stationed on site at all times with access to anti tank weaponry in the event of internal breach or external incursion. Additional assets will be made available if greater force is deemed necessary to prevent local military activity from breaching SCP 3989's active zone. Civilians attempting to gain access are to be turned away or restrained with non-lethal force and must be captured prior to breaching SCP-3989. All experimentation on retrieved items is to be carried out under Biosafety Level 4 conditions. Any material retrieved from SCP-3989 is to be incinerated at the conclusion of testing with no exceptions.
Personnel affected by SCP 3989 V are to be offered the option to self terminate following interview or remanded to permanent HCP 03 containment cells on site. Bi weekly, four teams of 10 members each of MTF Chai 7 fumigators will enter the active zone in all four cardinal directions and incinerate any new growth within the active zone to a depth of approximately 10 meters. Drone exploration of SCP-3989-A requires approval of the anomalies HML CL supervisor, currently Dr. Sahir Yakim, and Area 126 Director Farid Mohammed. Description. SCP-3989 is a USUWAS-2-C unstable, stationary, unaided, wide area, safe, two-way, cyclical, space-time anomaly which connects a large portion of its interior to an unknown and apparently extra-universal or extra-temporal location, SCP-3989-A. The active zone of this anomaly was approximately 12 meters. It is now 30 meters in diameter. SCP-3989 is located within a grove of Olea europaea trees in redacted Syria. External measurements and observations of the grove indicate a footprint of approximately 5 acres. From the perimeter of the property, the anomalous nature of SCP-3989 is not readily apparent, though locally embedded Kant counters readings fluctuate between 0.7 6 and 3.62 humes, with highest readings occurring during dark hours. This effect persists at distances of up to 20 meters from the perimeter of the property. Upon entering the active zone, SCP-3989 manifests a non-Euclidean space, which continues to expand as it is traversed until the subjects of the anomaly cross into SCP-3989-A. Radio and other communication signals continue to traverse the anomaly with no distortion, but GPS tracking has proven ineffective. Traversal into SCP-3989-A can only be achieved from a westerly direction after sunset. If the active zone is approached from the east or during daylight hours, non-Euclidean properties of the area persist, but will not result in subject's disappearance into SCP-3989-A. Interior dimensions of the active zones exceed previously 5, but now 10 acres. Instances of SCP-3989-1 within the active zone appear with the same frequency as non-anomalous Olea europaea trees on the rest of the property and are likely to outnumber them by as much as 2 to 1. SCP-3989 and SCP-3989-A are home to several anomalous forms of life, which bear striking genetic resemblance to Homo sapiens. Though individual structures are clearly constructed of human tissue, their organization is widely divergent. All trees present within the region are characterized by varying degrees of ossification. Specimens which are completely ossified and defoliated resume growth of new leaf-like and fruit-like structures to support their anomalous anatomy and reproduce animal-like and plant-like entities found within SCP-3989-A. Update 5-7-2015 SCP-3989-V refers to an unknown chemical or biological vector responsible for the onset of several perceptual effects in the area surrounding SCP-3989. The primary function of the vector appears to be the concealment of SCP-3989's full active range and to increase difficulty in perceiving related anomalous biological activity. Extended exposure to SCP-3989-V dampens the effects of perceptual tampering, 
but encourages a sense of curiosity regarding SCP-3989. Long-term exposure results in an obsessive, even religious fascination with SCP-3989 and SCP-3989-A. Biosafety Level 4 precautions are sufficient to prevent exposure in long-term personnel, suggesting either a chemical or olfactory vector. Research Pending SCP-3989's active zone has expanded at least 18 meters since its initial containment. Recovery Foundation assets in Syria were alerted to a possible anomaly when a small orchard owned by Redacted the Northern Redacted, began to report and sell anomalously high crop yields for his reported number of trees. Field agents dispatched were met with significant resistance to questioning, and so began surveillance of the property. A harvesting operation alerted agents to the anomalous space contained within SCP-3989, and Foundation agents seized the property. During interview, Mr. Redacted demonstrated no knowledge as to the origin or purpose of SCP-3989 and appeared to be entirely ignorant of SCP-3989-A. He and his family were subsequently amnesticized, relocated, and released. No further anomalous activity on the part of Mr. Redacted has since been recorded. Circumstances surrounding SCP-3989's initial manifestation remain unknown. Addendum 3989-1 During inspection by Biological Containment Specialist Dr. Marshall Grant on 1906-2015, 19 instances of SCP-3989-redacted spontaneously appeared beyond the perimeter of the active zone and proceeded to dismantle primary containment. Dr. Grant initiated containment breach alarm, but received no response from assets within Area 126. An unknown number of security assets on site proceeded to release all biological anomalies in permanent containment. Two instances of SCP-3989-1 redacted, and 47 instances of SCP-3989-1 redacted, a firefight ensued wherein 30 Area 126 personnel were terminated, as well as 15 members of the Biological Containment Inspection Team. Foundation MTF assets in Damascus were scrambled and successfully terminated all 21 instances of SCP-3989 redacted outside of containment. 25 tagged instances of SCP-3989 redacted were recovered from the bodies of Area 126 personnel. The rest remain unaccounted for. Containment procedures are currently under review by Dr. Grant. Interview AA 3989 03. Dr. Marshall Grant. Access granted. Interview AA 3989 03. 1906 2015. Dr. Marshall Grant. Introduction. Standard after-action interview to establish details surrounding the 1906 containment breach at Area 126, performed by Dr. Mara Jamis. Dr. Marshall Grant is visibly distressed and experiencing mild tremors throughout the interview. Good afternoon, Dr. Grant. Hey, no, miss, it is definitely a bad afternoon. Yes, I understand. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview. Do you need some more time before we proceed? No, thank you. I just, I, I want to get this over with. You know, I've been working for the Foundation for almost 40 years, and I've never seen, you know, combat. Based on what I've heard, you did very well for the circumstances. Let's proceed, shall we? First, what is it that led you to come to Area 126 today? You, you don't think that I... We just need to get a full picture of the circumstances. Normally, one of our local assets would have carried out this inspection. I'm curious why you came here. 
I, well, I'm a biologist, right? And I have a good long record. So the foundation made me into a kind of consultant. I was flipping through a large stack of records when I saw this. This site here in the middle of a war zone, popping out exobiological entities surrounded by what? A fence? No mention of biosafety precautions, no pathologists on site, nothing. It just, it's dangerous. Very dangerous. Yes, but coming all this way, was that really necessary? Oh yes, I uh, called the, uh, what do you call it? HMCL, Dr. Kazali, and left messages, email, phone calls, contacted the director. They just waved me off. Don't worry about it. It's under control. And the Damascus branch is, well, busy dodging bombs. So I figured I'd come out and see for myself. If it's under control, no harm. But if it's not, you know, I can tell them what. Sorry. Dr. Grant rests his head on the table and takes several deep breaths. Marshall, are you all right? Yeah, just, I gotta slow down. Okay. Jesus. Adrenaline. Dr. Grant raises his head and takes a sip from a small cup of water. Nods and motions with his hand to continue. So, going back to our discussion, what was the status of Area 126 when you first arrived? As soon as we pulled up, I could smell it. The team I had with me couldn't, but I could. Something was rotten, like dead or dying rotten. And I swear, this... It's hard to describe, but there was a kind of dusty yellow haze over the whole place. Agent Redacted didn't report anything like that. I know, but I used to HMCL for... Never mind. The point is, I had to get myself inoculated against basic cognitive hazards and hallucinogens. So, I see. At what point did you sound the breach alarm? Well, I... I tried to call someone out to talk. No answer again. And I wasn't about to step into that stuff. Who knows what. I had one of the security team radio the armory, and all we got back was this gibberish talking that I tried very hard not to hear. We started suiting up masks to head in there when... Take your time. I've seen a lot of gross things, but I, I can't. It was like looking at something out of a video game or something. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Three meters tall, maybe four. No skin, teeth the size of my thumbs. One arm was just enormous. The other cradled up next to it. And I swear, I watched it inflate to match the other one. Skin just suddenly wraps around it like plastic molding. It had no eyes, but I swear the bastard saw me. And it smiled. And that, then boom, boom, boom. A bunch of them shoot up from the ground and there's bullets flying everywhere. And I fell back to the van and got on the radio to Damascus because I have no idea if small arms can do anything to this thing. There was a lot of screaming, and I didn't, I didn't watch. I couldn't watch. What about inside the facility? Can you tell us about that? Dr. Grant shudders and nods. I crept out when I heard the helicopter overhead, and the fence was all twisted and gone. Two of those, I guess I'd call them humanoids, were slumped down on the ground, not moving. A few more surrounded further up. There were a couple of bodies nearby, partially um, consumed. By now my adrenaline is up, so I secured my mask, grabbed a rifle, and started to make my way to the facility. That's when I noticed that the guys, the people inside, were shooting out at me. So you did what you had to. Yeah. 
Yeah, I suppose. Luckily, one of my team saw me and ran over to take the lead. Inside was a mess. Weird symbols on the walls. I can feel my head warping around it, so I just keep my eyes forward and focus on helping clear the hallways. Some of them surrendered. I don't... I don't think it works on everyone, whatever the... Anyway, we get down to the containment level, and all the doors are just open. Empty terrariums everywhere, and this... Fuck. You're referring to SCP-3989- redacted. Right in the middle of the atrium. Someone was growing a tree made out of backbones right in the middle of the atrium. I, 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 at first I thought it was a fetish or something. Some sick construction they made in reverence to whatever's inside, but then I heard its heartbeat. I heard it breathing. They had been growing it altering it, harvesting things from it, using some of the people on site to feed it, our people. The only locked cells had, I, I, I don't know, 30 unaffected people huddled inside, stripped nude and covered in, I, I don't even want to guess. It was all over the logs, like they were, some of this is going to go higher, and I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Dr. Grant wipes his eyes and takes another drink of water. Okay, two things. Number one, whatever's in there, it wants out. It wants our planet for something. Food, worship, I don't know. But there is no way this anomaly intends to stay put. And the second... Containment procedures say its diameter is 12 meters here on our side. That's not even close. It's growing, and we need to get someone down here yesterday. Dendum 3989-2 SCP-3989 has been upgraded to a header class anomaly. Biosafety level 4 precautions are in effect to prevent future infestations of SCP-3989-1 redacted within Area 126. New containment procedures completed as of 5-7-2015. Additional information is accessible only to personnel with level 4 general or SCP-3989 project specific clearance. Personnel able to perceive this message are authorized to access the remainder of this document. If you are reading this and have not been inoculated via Agent IH-3989-B, please contact Dr. Sahir Yakim immediately to verify your clearance. Failure to do so may result in permanent cognitive impairment. Please note that inoculation does not lift all redactions for all readers. Exploration Log 389-15, 15 to 2014. Access granted. Exploration log 389-15, 1502 to 2014. Participants D-126-15, Dr. Farik Ghazali, Remote Observer. Introduction. Exploration of SCP-30... 989 began as of containment in December of 2009. Initial surveys determined extent of the initial spatial anomaly, but were unable to identify additional anomalous properties. Subsequent research requests involving the effects of long-term exposure to non-Euclidean spaces in live human subjects extended normal testing times beyond sunset and allowed D-126-15 to directly observe SCP-3989-1. SCP-3989-1A and SCP-3989-A for the first time. The equipment was repurposed and D-126-15 was fitted with audio and video surveillance equipment for being redeployed within SCP-3989. All right, 
How about now? There you are. Okay, good. We're recording both audio and video. Go ahead and turn on your headlamp and adjust. Perfect. Eh, yeah. Ain't my first rodeo. You want me to head back in? Yes. Please proceed toward the center of SCP-3989. Camera view turns and proceeds past several normal olive trees. After approximately 15 seconds, a pair of trees at the edge of the visible field appear to stop moving as several more trees manifest through them and move past. That smell is coming back. Can you describe it for the tape? Old blood, something rotten, and a little sweet. Whoa, you seeing this? They look like little maggot noodles. Camera pans to the left, revealing several small, worm-like creatures. Yes, see if you can collect a few. D-126-15 produces a specimen bag and collects a few of the creatures. They're warm to the touch, very soft, kind of hard to pull off. Get a load of this bark, it's powdery, white, very brittle. Bark is covered in white patches, D-126-15, scratches one of the white patches with his fingernail. Can you remove a section for us? D-126-15 pulls a flake from the white portion of the tree, bringing some normal bark with it, and puts it in a separate bag. Got it. Good. Keep moving. God damn, this smell keeps getting stronger. Look at these maggots. Camera pans quickly across several trees. Bark is not visible in some due to the coverage of small worms. D-126-15 coughs and gags. There's a lot of leaves on the ground here. Not much foliage left on the trees. Do you need further assistance? Nah, I'm good. It just reeks in here. Okay, something just shifted. I, I think I'm through. Trees that were formerly stationary at the edge of visibility continue moving forward. More trees become visible beyond. Dull yellow ambient light begins to grow. We lost you on GPS, but we're still receiving you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Not as many worms anymore, but all the trees are bone white. I think I see a light up ahead. It can't be dawn already, can it? Negative. Please proceed. Proceeds forward slowly. Ambient light increases and maintains a deep yellow color. D-126-15 stops suddenly as if startled. Camera pans around in all sudden directions rapidly. I swear, I'm being watched. Try to remain calm and move your head slowly. It's hard for us to see if you start to panic like that. Yeah, easy for your ass to say. D-126-15 takes a long breath and walks forward. A low-hanging branch comes into view, apparently bearing red foliage. Oh, that is just gross. Please describe what you are seeing. The leaves are beating. Christ. Can you give us a closer look? D-126-15 reaches up to a branch and pulls it in front of the camera. Fluid is seen rushing through veins in a leaf-like structure. Structure regularly contracts and expands as though pumping the fluid. The branch in D-126-15's hand fractures, making a steady stream of thick black fluid onto his hand. D-126-15 begins to gag again before quickly putting the broken branch into a specimen bag. Camera pans down to reveal D-126-15's legs are apparently covered with the small white worms found on the forest floor. Nope, that's it. I'm done. Please continue, D-126-15. We need to get as much information as we can. I don't care. I'm coming out. You do what you gotta do. Camera turns, and D-126-15 begins to leave the anomaly. Herrick, we need you to go further into the anomaly and collect more. Loud cracking 
sound from off camera, followed by a deep guttural sound. Camera captures a large pale hind limb moving out of sight behind a nearby tree. D-126-15 extinguishes hand lamp and be good heard running. Afterward, D-126-15 suffered minor lacerations on his shins and feet, though no trace of the worm-like creatures from the video can be found on or about his person. Specimens collected yielded valuable anatomical information for biology found within the anomalous space, designated as CP3989-A. Branch returned by D126-15 included an olive-like structure in addition to the leaf-like structures of the anomalous plants. Composition of the branch and small wood sample were confirmed to be human bone. Leaves confirmed to consist of human cardiac tissue. No sample of the fluid was able to be retrieved. Anomalies designated SCP-3989-1 and SCP-3989-1A, respectively. D-126-15 was reprimanded and given five-day extension to his term of service. Exploration Log 3989-16, 1702-2014. Access granted. Exploration log 3989-16-1702-2014. Participants D-126-15, D-126-16, Dr. Farik Ghazali, Remote Observer. Introduction. At D-126-15 agreed continue exploration of SCP-3989-A along with D-126-16, on the condition that they both be granted firearms. Dr. Farid Ghazali observing. Mission objectives were set to identify the large creature in Log 3989-15, as well as to continue exploration further into SCP-3989-A, an attempt to identify further anomalies. D-15 and D-16 were each issued one Browning high-powered 9mm pistol with a full magazine of 13 plus 1 rounds. Researchers on hand were fitted with Class 3 EA body armor for their safety. An additional complement of five security personnel accompanied the subjects. Check, 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 check. Okay, D-15, you know the procedure, I'm sure. Fuck you, Farik. D-15 checks his firearm, satisfies himself that his weapon is loaded, and holsters it. D-16, please follow D-15 into the anomaly. We will not be collecting specimens of the CP-3989-1 or 1A at this time. Uh, okay. He means the worms in the bone tree. Just keep your gloves on and follow me. Extraneous information redacted. Doctor, it's getting a lot brighter here. Affirmative. You may now switch off your headlamps. I think I see the branch I broke the other day. It's still bleeding. Do plants do that? There are a lot of worms on it. D-16. Can you see if you can get a jar under there to collect some of that liquid? D-16 raises a specimen jar and collects a few milliliters of the substance. As D-15 gets a closer look at the broken branch. Farik, are you seeing that? D-15, please refer to me as Dr. Ghazali for the official record. Whatever, man. Are you seeing this or not? The worms. They're pooping bone. D-15, his camera zooms in and observes SCP-3989-1A, depositing white calcified material on the end of the broken branch. A long segment of branch behind the mass of instances appears to have been deposited to a similar piecemeal manner. Yes, I see it. Good eye. Can we get someone in the lab to put 1A in a petri dish with some wood or leaves or something? Or did you already do that? D15, that's enough. Please proceed westward. Extraneous information redacted. D-15's camera captures several mature instances of SCP-3989-1. 
Instances are no longer spaced regularly as in previous footage. Nearby instances appear to be fruiting. That's new. Doctor, are you able to see the fruiting bodies? Are, are they moving? Shit, I think they're moving. Yes, I see them. D16, can you retrieve one? D15 camera pans rapidly. D15 draws his firearm to a low ready stance. Belay that. Something's here. Herrick, do you want another five days? Christ. D16, proceed as ordered. D16 removes a specimen bag and reaches out to grab one of the fruiting bodies. Dark purple in color. It ruptures in his hand and 15 instances of SCP-3989-1A emerge from it, rapidly crawling up D16's arm. D16 brushes them off quickly. A burbling sound is heard off camera. Get it off me. Must have been ripe. Get one of the bright red ones and let's get out of here. Negative. We need to locate. D16's camera is suddenly lifted off the ground. D16 gasps in surprise and connection is suddenly interrupted. D15's camera pans rapidly. A human pelvis and legs in D-class attire falls to the ground. Camera pans upward to observe a pale humanoid, approximately 4 meters tall with extensive dentation and highly defined musculature. Face bears no nose, ears, or eyes, or other discerning marks. D-15 rapidly fires his weapons, perforating the entity's chest with no fewer than six rounds. Bleeding is visible, but entity shows no signs of discomfort. Entity extends one arm and strikes D-15. Connection interrupted. Afterward. Large humanoid entity has been designated SCP-3989-2. Agent jo Josiah Herrick posthumously reinstated to Foundation service. Agent Herrick and D-126-16 listed as killed in action. Exploration Log 3989-17, 5-3-2014. Access granted. Exploration Log 3989-17, 5-3-2014. Participants, MTF, Zeta-9, more rats. Team Charlie, Dr. Farik Ghazali, remote observer. Introduction. Following the events of Exploration 3989-16, additional human interaction with SCP-3989-A was deemed an unnecessary risk by many attendant personnel. Dr. Ghazali re requested approval from Redacted, head of extra-dimensional topology, directly in order to continue experimentation. A detachment of MTF Zeta-9, more rats, was procured for the purpose of continued reconnaissance of SCP-3989-A. Stated objectives were to retrieve samples collected by D-126-16, establish visual contact with SCP-3989-2 if available, if possible, and attempt to fully traverse SCP-3989-A, rather than try to collect additional samples of anomalous objects within SCP-3989-A. MTF Zeta-9 was equipped with an experimental handheld ultrasound machine to investigate any future fruiting bodies without causing damage to SCP-3989 native fauna. MTF Zeta-9 members present are designated Charlie, squad leader, X-Ray, and Delta. Sound check. Clear. And the devil makes three. Thank you, ladies. You may proceed eastward when ready. Extraneous information redacted. Charlie, get a load of the floor. Exploration team camera pans to the ground. Hundreds of instances of SCP-3989-1A visible. Beneath them, a thick layer of red, fleshy material coats the ground. The, looks like it might be a placenta or something. Ace, you want a sample? Negative Delta. In fact, don't take samples of anything. Last two people who did that ended up KIA. 
That would have been nice to know beforehand. Can it, D? Base, can you give us an estimate on where you can we can expect to see the bodies? Not a reliable one, no. Shouldn't be more than a few minutes. You'll come to a bone tree right in your path. D-12616 bought it right around there. I think I see it. What the... Oh, fuck. An instance of SCP-3989-1 appears on the path ahead. The body of Agent Herrick is seen crucified, naked, upside down, and pinned to the tr trunk of the tree by bony growths through his hands and feet. Several symbols appear to be carved in his skin but these are not discernible through camera feed. A large chunk of SCP-3989-1A are present at the trunk of the tree. Remnants of D-Class jumpsuits are visible nearby. Language. Nothing we haven't seen before. D. Get up there and see if you can find the canister. Base wants their samples back. Delta approaches the mass of SCP-3989-1A and tentatively pushes them aside. After approximately two minutes, she retrieves D-126-16's sample jar, still containing a small amount of black fluid. This it? It appears so. Yes. Please hold on to that for us. I'd like you all to proceed eastward as soon as possible. Roger Base. You heard him, ladies. Get on the hump. Carlton Heston over here. I mean, aye, aye, Captain. After approximately five minutes, the persistent haze lifts, and Charlie Team's body cameras are able to see a large open valley. The sky is yellow in color. All apparent plant life below bears red foliage. Also visible are several instances of SCB-3989-2. I can see some humanoids down below us. Very large. I don't see anything. Between the treetops, you can see their heads poking out. I can just make out the silhouette in the shadows. It's your imagination. Delta camera zooms in on the entities. Feed from X-Ray and Charlie does not contain any traces of humanoids at this time, despite similar field of view. Base, tell me I'm crazy. I would very much enjoy being crazy. Yes, that's our dash too. Try to avoid contact as you proceed. Should be pretty easy. I don't see any eyes. We have reason to believe they have some anomalous sensory apparatus. I'll take things they should have told us for 200, Alex. Delta and X-Ray laugh audibly. Extraneous information redacted. Curly accidentally bumps into an instance of SCP-3989-1 and suddenly reacts startled. Body camera now records two instances of SCP-3989-2 facing her. Base, base, I, I, I can see them. Remain calm, Charlie. You've been walking among them for the past 20 minutes. Do not engage. I still got nothing. Touch that tree over there. Fuck! Okay, okay, so what does that mean? It means keep moving. Try to ignore them. Instances of SCP-3989-2 continue to follow Charlie Team, while team members exhibit signs of stress. Rapid panning movements of cameras to observe instances following Charlie Team. Rapid breathing. Team maintains radio silence for five minutes. Trees up there are, uh, are starting to look different. X-ray, can you get that ultrasound out? X-ray produces ultrasound device and approaches nearby tree. Trunk is segmented and exhibits musculature on one side. Appearance is consistent with enlarged vertebral columns. Camera pans upward. In addition to previously observed cardiac foliage, entity appears to have foliage similar in structure to bronchial tubes, which expand and contract in slower rhythm than cardiac foliage. Fruiting bodies are present approximately three meters above ground level. Delta. Those things hanging off the trunk look like afterbirth. I swear I can smell it through my ventilator. Base, if I'm honest, I don't want to climb this thing. 
As long as you don't cause any damage to the fruit, you should be fine. You come in here and claim it. Xenia, just get it done. I want to get out of here. X-ray hesitantly scales the vertebral column and places the ultrasound device onto a fruiting body. It twitches under the de device as she proceeds to move the probe around. Additional instances of SCP-3989-2 appear at the base of the tree. Guttural sounds are heard. Base, have you got it? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Please proceed. Negative base, we are not okay. They won't engage unless you damage the orchard. Risk is minimal. Wait, there, there's another fruit up here. Let me see if I can... Fuck! X-ray reaches a smaller, darker fruit and begins to probe with ultrasound. The fruit ruptures almost immediately, and a small, animate humanoid with four legs, two pelvises, and, ex and an exposed spine crawls up her arm, down her back, and runs quickly out of sight. X-ray loses her grip and falls to the ground and stands quickly. Instances of SCP-3989-2 do not react. X-ray, are you... Does anyone else hear that? We are not getting any audio. Describe it to me. No, no, hearing is the wrong word. I, I feel something, like something is grabbing my liver and giggling in my face. Instances of SCP-3989-2 begin to converge on Charlie Team. Delta's camera observes two instances emerging from the ground. One instance has visible scarring on its torso from apparent gunshot wounds. The fleshy substance on the ground closes behind the emerging instances. Audio of low groaning sound can be heard. Analysis suggests no fewer than ten instances present. That's it. No more of it. I'm calling a general abort. Backtrack on the double. Yes, ma'am. No, team. We need to keep pushing forward. You're almost at the, uh, to the other side. We need to collect more data. So send in a drone or something. I'm not risking any more than we already have. We're out of here. X-ray's body camera shows a smaller humanoid, approximately 1.7 meters in height, peeking from behind a nearby vertebral tree. Charlie team does not appear to notice. Delta is preoccupied with kicking off dozens of SCP-3989-1A 39 instances, which are crawling along her suit. Charlie is moving out, carefully stepping around SCP-3989-2 instances. Despite lack of eyes, instances follow her with their faces. Several appear to be smiling. You, you are all making a terrible mistake. Think about what we can learn for it, from it. Leave and be devoured. Stay and shed your mortality. The wild beckons. You've got a lot of fucking nerve. That, that wasn't me. Kythera awaits the vessels chosen. Come forth unto Orok and receive your just reward. Kythera, mythical location present in both Broken God and Sarkic mythology. Oro, Sarkic prophet of war, the hunt, betrayal, and loyalty. Credited with the conquest of Kythera in Sarkic scripture. Charlie Teen continues running. Body cameras capture the emergence of several more entities of approximately human size but details cannot be resolved by provided footage. Laughter can be heard throughout the remainder of the tape. Sounds rem reminiscent of combat are also captured. Source has not been determined. Extraneous information redacted. End of log. Analysis of ultrasound data reveals small instances of SCP-3989-2 growing within fruiting bodies of the vertebral tree-like structures. Large humanoids redesignated to SCP-3989-2A and, SCP SCP and newly discovered tree structures designated SCP-3989-2. 
smaller humanoid designated 3989-2b. Follow-up exploration requested to determine life cycle of SCP-3989-2, 2a. Researcher's note, 6-1-2017. Have to point out, this is the first time it's clear that Dr. Gazali was under the influence of SCP-3989-V. Infection gets worse over subsequent logs. In his capacity as lead researcher, who was able to conceal these logs from leadership until such time as SCP-3989-V infestation became dominant. Dr. Marshall Grant, Level 4 Biological Containment Specialist. Exploration Log 3989-18, 14 Access Granted. Exploration Log 3989-18, 14 Participants, Dr. Farrakh Gazali, Area 126 Security, Team Delta, Technician Amal Dwent, Remote Observer. Introduction, voiceover. Previous human interaction with SCP-3989 has been marred by human frailties of fear and mortality. In the interest of further discovery based on the text we've discovered on site since primary containment, there exists no record of text recovered from SCP-3989. The veracity of the statement is unknown. I, Dr. Farid Bazele, will personally lead an expedition in search of Hythera and the Orkian Temple within. Secondary objectives include obtaining live specimens of SCP-3989-2A and 2B preferably in utero. I would like to state for the record that this experiment is proceeding under my own authority, and I accept full responsibility for the outcome. Bravo team members, Gulf, India, and Echo will accompany me. Quick sound check. 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 See, Dwent. Echo, check your mic. I don't read you. How's this? Perfect. That's all of you. Ready when you are, Doctor. Okay, everyone stay close to me. It's a rather long walk. Try not to touch anything if you can help it. Anything you see or hear won't confirm you if you don't make the first move. What constitutes a first move? We're, uh, we're not quite sure. Just keep your hands to yourself. I fear not. Nor I. That's the spirit. Come, there is much to see. Team body cameras capture the transition to SCP-3989-A. Unknown entities visible peeking from behind trees throughout the video feed. Gulf can be heard breathing heavily at times, as the camera whips to few entities which promptly disappear from video feed. An intelligible whispering periodically appears on audio log. Team members do not speak for approximately 20 minutes. Amal, status check? Things are going nominally. Have you seen the... Lost. Lost? You, you mean, we're going in after a... Assist? That is the current plan. Yes, Amal. I saw them. I believe they see us as pilgrims. Don't get cocky, doctor. There is much we don't know. This is a very bad idea. Amal, do you know if golf has been initiated? In initiated? Into what? Echo, India, and Dr. Kazali stop walking and turn to face golf. India and Echo raise their weapons and aim at golf. Oh. Oh, fuck you guys. Echo and India open fire on golf, who does not have time to return fire and is quickly terminated. The floor of the orchard opens beneath him, and a swarm of SCP-3989-1A 39 quickly surrounds and begins to consume the body. Shame. I enjoyed working with him. Do not grieve for the blind and deaf. Wonderful sights and sounds await them. Team continues to traverse SCP-3989-A. 
topography of the area is inconsistent with previous exploration attempts. No trace is found of Agent Herrick's body or the large open valley entered by MTF Zeta-9. Dr. Ghazali begins to pace and is visibly disoriented. Audio during this time is sporadic. Intelligible portions transcribed below. Sacrifice. Betrayal. Who brings this offering? The world of man walks in ignorance and frailty. Minds of the past cannot navigate the labyrinth of the present. It is ours. Reap. 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 Continues for three minutes. This, this is wrong. Explain. Pamal, how long have we been walking? Pamal, base, doctor, explain. There was supposed to be a valley and a mountain. I swore they were at the foot of the temple when they turned back. India, shoot that man. India immediately raises his firearm. Echo releases a three-round burst into India's head. India falls to the ground, terminated. His body camera continues to record as he is subsumed by SCP-3989-1. What, what, why did you do that? Oh. Patron of... Trail and loyalty. Then it stands to reason that we will now find his temple. Harvest has been fulfilled. The hunt begins. How long since Herrick brought back the first of the blessed white worm? Perhaps even before you. I wish you hadn't said that on record. What record? This stays on sight. Go. Reap. Heh. <laughs> well played, both of you. I'm sure he will be pleased. India's body camera records emergence in a dimly lit blackstone hallway. A face with a vertical mouth is visible on the frame briefly. The body is carried down the hallway briefly before the feed is interrupted. Echo's body camera records a topological restructuring event behind Dr. Ghazali. Landmask appears to shift and change until a large valley opens below reveals a black stone temple complex, SCP-3984-4. Dr. Ghazali turns and sees the complex. Knock, and the door will be opened. Remaining team members proceed down into the temple complex. Little activity is visible on the feed, other than various views of the complex. Architecture present suggests quasi-Mesoamerican and Sumerian influences, but is inconclusive. Significant degradation is present on several buildings. Writing is absent. Numerous examples of SCP-3989-2 are present throughout the grounds. Instances appear to shift towards Echo and Dr. Ghazali as they approach and recede as they depart. Magnificent. This place is truly agent. Ion. Self may have walked upon these stones. India's body camera reactivates. Several large humanoids are visible from the camera's vantage point. Both India and Gulf are visible on stone altars in the background. Large humanoids with vertical mouths, SCP-3989-3, surround them, apparently vocalizing though no audio is recorded. Feed cuts after 15 seconds. Sound of stone falling is heard through Echo's microphone. Echo turns quickly, raising her weapon. Doctor, did you hear that? Look at these reliefs. Exquisite, and after so much time. Echo's camera pans back to where Dr. Ghazali was standing, and he is no longer present. No interruption or anomalous movement was visible through Dr. Kazali's video feed. Doctor, can you read us? The Roman soldier once explained to me that warfare is an honorable enterprise. Was it not the Roman horde which coined the phrase, 
Vita e Imperia. Eric, do you hear me? Echo has audio feed from bases cut. Dr. Gazali body cam pans in attempt to locate Echo when he realizes she is missing. Dr. Gazali breathes rapidly and his pulse quickens. Camera picks up several spatial distortions in SCP-3984-4. Instances between adjacent buildings expand and contract at irregular intervals, as does their elevation relative to their vantage point. Audio records the beginnings of a distressed vocalization, but cuts before words can be discerned. Dr. Kazali moves quickly to a pyram pyramidal structure to his right, which appears stable relative to his position, and begins to climb it. Dr. Kazali's sidearm is visible in his hand at this time. Echo, whose body camera captures similar spatial distortions to Dr. Kazali's, though of less er, intensity. Audio feed unresponsive. She retreats to a nearby outcrop with rifle at low ready, and appears to be responding to sounds in the environment. Several possible sightings of humanoids on record. However, spatial distortion makes these very difficult to discern. A pair of black structures resembling eyes appear in the sky overhead and vanish within two seconds. Audio feed resumes. Can you hear me? I'm stuck in a small mausoleum near the shit, no compass. Is Ailey Dwent? I am here. Who said that? Who are you? A loud, low, widely spaced rhythm is heard, along with a rushing of air. Air and rhythm are seen to correspond to spatial distortions of SCP-3989-4. I live. Four instances of SCP-3989-3 emerge from the ground approximately 30 meters from Echo. One instance, standing approximately 0.5 meters taller than the others on four hind legs, produces a sword from the center of its chest and directs it towards Echo. All four instances proceed slowly, the three in front extending long poles from their forearms which detach and form glaives, approximately two meters in length. She opens fire, striking two in the skull who fall back momentarily before regaining their feet. Wolf's body camera reactivates and delivers a feed of some location behind Echo. Echo continues firing after reloading. The largest SCP-3989-3 instance is struck once in each shoulder and once in the neck, stumbles and rises again, bleeding but not in any apparent distress. Gulf's camera draws closer. A hand resembling those of SCP-3989-3, but wearing a Foundation security uniform, grabs Echo by the shoulder and plunges a dagger into her neck. Obscuring the camera before the feed cuts. Dr. Gazali reacts in synchronization to the sounds of the unknown vocalization, though no audio plays through his microphone. He retreats into a chamber at the top of the pyramid. Interior dimensions of the chamber suggest it recedes far further to the rear than an external view of the structure should allow. Dr. Kazali activates headlamp. Dark red structures are apparent in the sides of the chamber, regularly pulsating in slow rhythm. A light is visible ahead. Dr. Kazali runs toward it. Analysis of playback reveals several small, less than 0.3 meters long, light-skinned figures running along the passage in both directions. No reaction noted from Dr. Gazali to their presence. Far end of the hallway opens into a large round chamber, with stadium seating on all sides. Dr. Gazali trips and falls approximately 3 meters onto the floor of the chamber. Floor is covered in half meter of viscous black fluid. Audio resumes. Oh, no, 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 no. Camera pans upward. 
seats are filled with innumerable instances of SCP-3989-3 chanting an unknown language. A five-meter-tall door opens on the opposite side of the chamber, releasing two instances of SCP-3989-2A. Gulf, India, and Echo's cameras all resume transmission from various points within the upper level, with clear view of Dr. Kazali below. No, I am with you. I wanted to help you. Don't you understand? I am not a warrior. I am a simple pilgrim. Think of what we could learn together. Me reap. SCP-3989-2A 3989 instances drop to all fours and run across the chamber as Dr. Gazali fires rapidly. SCP-3989-2A 3989 throws Dr. Gazali against the far wall. Video feed ends. Afterward, after analysis of the above log, all team members were considered KIA and their equipment unrecoverable. Site director, Dr. Yugi suspended all inquiries into the event and seized all related logs for information security purposes. Addendum On 21st of March 2014, an instance of SCP-3989-2 spontaneously appeared in the Area 126 atrium, bearing four fruits approximately one meter in diameter. During establishment of in-situ containment, all four fruits simultaneously ruptured, and four individual humanoids genetically identical to Dr. Gazali, Echo, India, and Gulf were recovered. Area 126 record indicates these entities were returned to active duty in site operations. The above logs were recovered buried under the live instance of SCP-3989-2 during the events of 1506-2016 containment breach. Complete list of sub-designations. Access granted. Item designation, SCP-3989-1. Prior observation or designation, none. Description. Classified tree resembling Colea europaea. Leaf-like structures composed of cardiac tissue. Fruiting body replaced with egg sacs containing 10 to 15 larval instances of SCP-3989-1A. Adding designation, SCP-3989-1A. Possible sighting related as an SK bio type Z at related sites. Small worm like organisms essential to ossification process of existing olive trees in SCP 3989 active zone. Limited anatomical characteristics. Consumption of wood fiber elicits deposit of human osteocytes in non anomalous trees. SCP 3989 2. Rare observation and designation, no prior designation, unconfirmed reports of instances possibly within active zone of SCP-610 suggest prior successful breach. Description. Tree-like structures composed of enlarged human vertebral columns exhibit branching structures reminiscent of trees, but of no discernible non-anomalous parallel. Exposed lung brachiation and cardiac tissue in place of small twigs and leaves bears small amniotic sacs from placental tissue along the trunk. Developing instances of SCP-3989-2A and SCP-3989-89-2B. Item. SCP-3989-2 is a 3989 Previous observation or designation. Possible SK biotype ASCP-248-2. Large, long-limbed humanoids. White in color, no discernible facial features or sensory organs. First sighted during manned expeditions in SCP-3989-A. Behavior is restricted to observation of Foundation presence and less provoked. Apparently tasked with guarding SCP-3989-89-A. Several exploration teams lost while retrieving 
attempting to retrieve live samples from SCP-3989-2. SCP-3989-2B, no prior designation, unconfirmed reports of instances possibly within the active zone of SCP-1610, suggesting prior successful breach. Small humanoids, similarly lacking eyes or sensory organs, white in color with exposed vertebral columns branching at the base, creating two pelvises, possesses no fewer than three hearts and four lungs, though more have been recorded, retreats from interaction with Foundation personnel or exploratory vehicles, if able. Item SCP-3989-3 Previous designation Possible SK Bio Type B Unconfirmed reports Of instances present during SCP-1610 active periods between these two anomalies is unknown. Humanoids, 1.5 to 2 meters in height with vertical mouths. Bodies are protected by apparently chitinous or keratinous armor plating. No samples retrieved. Will engage Foundation personnel on site. Notable deviations from previously encountered SK Biotype B instances, including additional hind or forelimbs, Presence of horizontal mouths, horned craniums, or integrated blade, head, and projectile weaponry. SCP-3984-4. Previous designation, none. Temple complex, visible at estimated at distance estimated to be 10 kilometers from entry to SCP-3989-A. Extent, unknown. Construction appears to be of a dark stone-like material. No samples yet collected. SCP-39-89-3 concentration increases with proximity to the temple. SCP-39-89-V Previous designation, not applicable. Designation of unknown perception and cognition affecting vector associated with concealing the anomalous properties of SCP-3989 and sub-designations. The vector appears to apply not only to live observation, but also to video and audio recordings. It is unknown the extent to which this vector is responsible for concealing the events of Exploration Log 3989-18. Subsequent to containment breach on 15-6-2016, Anomalous effects apply to all personnel exposed directly to SCP-3989-A. Additional cognitive effects of auditory and visual hallucinations have been reported in redacted number of personnel since recontainment. Optional self-termination of those affected is authorized. Item SCP-3989-H Previous designation, not applicable. Four entities, formerly known as Dr. Farid Ghazali, Security Captain Elias Echo Fena, and Security Agents Gaith Golf Kalebi and Amar India Terzir, currently uncontained.